go. So today we're going to look at quantum key distribution or QKD. So we started off with the idea of a one time pad and introduced the concept of a key. In one time pad, the key has to be generated once, it had to be shared privately and securely between Alice and Bob, and it could not be reused, and it should be truly random. So the problem of sharing the key still remains. Uh, Alice and Bob need to get together or communicate on a public channel on what the key is. Then we came up with an idea which uh, was the Diffie-Hellman scheme in which the key was generated by Alice and Bob using a mathematical sophisticated function and the key was never shared across a channel. Uh, however, there was an encryption coefficient and a decryption coefficient. Alice did not know that Everyone knew the encryption coefficient, but Alice did not know the decryption coefficient. And using uh, ideas from number theory and prime numbers and little Fermat's theorem, Alice and Bob were able to agree on a key without actually having to share the key amongst, between each other on a public channel. Now, all of this was happening classically. On a classical channel, classical information was being shared now we would like to look at true quantum communication in which quantum information is sent and the quantum information can be sent over a classical channel, no doubt about that, uh, but the information is truly quantum mechanical and it lies in the quantum nature of states that we generally deal with in quantum mechanics. So these states have certain properties, for example, there is this property called the uncertainty principle there is this property of incompatible variables, conjugate variables. Uh, there is this property of no cloning. There is this property of uh, our inability to measure a quantum state precisely in one go. Uh, we cannot go from probabilities to quantum states to wave functions. So there are many characteristic futures of quantum mechanics and entanglement. Entanglement is another characteristic future which cannot be described classically. So all of these are characteristic traits of quantum information and if those traits, those characteristics are exploited, then we will have secure quantum communication. Uh, so today I will give you an example of generating a key using quantum mechanical means and the different protocols that have been invented for this purpose. So we are going to look at one of the earliest protocols which is called BB84. And this is due to two engineers, Charles Bennett and Brassard, Giles Brassard. It was proposed in 1984. Now, how does this uh, QKD protocol work? There are other protocols as well. For example, there is B92, there is Eckert's Entangled State Protocol. So we are going to look at today at BB84 and Eckert's protocol or Eckert's protocol. So let's start off with BB84. Now all of these protocols are going to use the idea of photons. Since communication is at play here, generally you would like to communicate with photons rather than spins or superconducting qubits because photons are truly mobile they can go from one point to another. They're, they act like flying qubits. So generally quantum communication schemes use photons, laser light for example. Uh, now in the BB84 protocol there are, let's start off with two parties, Alice and Bob. So I would need uh, some more space here. So why don't I start off here. So here is Alice. 
Alice's world and here is Bob's world. Now Alice and Bob, before setting up the communication, they decide on a certain rule. And the rule that they decide upon is, uh, they're going to use the polarization degree of freedom of photons. Uh, it's a, like a block sphere, it's a qubit as you all very well know. And they're going to decide on the following scheme. They are going to choose between two bases. One basis is the horizontal vertical basis. So any photon polarization can be described in the horizontal vertical basis. Let's call this the Z basis for convenience. Z stands for the Zeeman basis or the computational basis. This is just for convenience. In other words, the horizontal and vertical states are eigen states of the sigma Z operator. So you could also label this as cat 0, cat 1, but I'm going to avoid that labeling because that is there for something else. The other basis is in which you break down or resolve any quantum state in terms of a diagonal polarization and an anti-diagonal polarization, where the is an equal superposition of the horizontal and vertical. Maybe in one of our prior lectures we have called this a 45 degree polarized photon. An anti-diagonal represents a superposition of horizontal and vertical LV to the negative sign. So this is how we define the diagonal and the anti-diagonal states. This basis, let's call this basis the X basis. Okay? Because these states, if I were to represent cat H, let's go back here. If I were to represent cat H as 1, 0, cat B as 0, 1, then these are eigen states of the sigma X operator. In sigma x, cat h gives me cat h with an eigenvalue plus 1 and sigma x, sorry, of the sigma z operator, sorry, sigma z operator. And the sigma z operator acts on cat e to give me minus 1 as the eigenvalue and so on. Cat b is going to be represented as 1 over under root 2, 1, 1 and can anti-diagonal as 1 over under root 2, 1 minus 1. Okay, so this is our definition. So Bob and Alice decide on using these bases, either of these bases in one go. And they also decide on another rule. The rule that they agree upon is that if In the Z basis, the Z basis and there's an X basis. If an outcome is uh, <coughs> zero, this corresponds to a quantum state cat H. If an outcome is one, it corresponds to a quantum state cat B. We are going to elaborate on this, but let's choose a rule. Similarly, in the x basis, if the output is 0, the quantum state is cat D, and if the output is cat 1, the quantum state is cat A. Okay, so these are rules that Alice and Bob have decided upon, and everyone knows about this rule. Even Eve knows about the rule, the, the prototypical adversary in this communication game. So how does this uh, communication proceed? It proceeds in the following fashion. Alice, 
She is the sender of information. Bob is the recipient. But they have to share a key. So what we're going to learn today is how is such a key generated. And it's generated in quantum mechanics. Alice chooses, Alice prepares a state. Okay? Now how does Alice prepare the state? Alice needs to choose a basis and she needs to choose whether she is going to prepare this state or this state. So she needs to make two kinds of choices. She needs to make a choice of basis and she needs to choose whether she wants to send a 0 or a 1. A key comprises a string of bits, zeros and ones. So really she needs to make two choices. Now what she does is she creates a string of random numbers, zeros and ones. And from that string she can choose a string of basis that she's going to use for generating her qubits. For example, Let's look at 10 instances of sending a bit from Alice to Bob in order to generate a key. We need 10 instances of bases and those bases are chosen between Z and X. All right. So let, I'm, I'm going to make a, a random string of 10 values of zeros and 1. I'm going to use a pseudo random number generator in my Mathematica. So I just type in random choice So let me make 20 instances okay. So what I've done on Mathematica is I've written random choice I want to randomly choose between a 0 and a 1 and I need 20 choices. So I generate a list of 20 numbers, zeros and 1s. And if I get say a 0, I put Z there and if I get a 1, I put an X there. So Alice, in her 20 instances of sending a message, she divides her time into 20 slots. And in each slot, she decides on a basis and she randomly chooses a basis from between Z and X. Okay? So what she does, so I'm just going to 1, 0, 0, 0. So X, Z, 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 Z. X, Z, X, X. X, Z, X. X, Z, X, Z, X, Z, X, Z, X. Z, X, Z, X, Z, Z, X, Z. Z, Z, X, Z. Z, X, Z. Z, X, Z. So he chooses his 20, he makes his 20 choices of bases, choosing from between Z and X. Now, Alice has to send uh, a qubit to Bob. Now, what qubit does she send? She's in, in a particular time slot. This is one of the 20 time slots that we are considering, for example. She needs, so in this time slot, she has chosen the basis Z. Now, in this basis Z, she can either send a ket H or a ket B. All right. Now, another random choice is needed. 
to choose between cat H and cat B. All right. So now let's have another string of twenty numbers, uh, random numbers between zero, uh, chosen between zero and one, and that random string will determine what state that she prepared, which is an eigen state of that particular basis in that particular time slot. Right, so I'm going to generate another sequence of 20 pseudo random numbers. So the numbers now are triple one zero one, triple one zero one. Chapter zero, zero zero one one zero zero, zero zero one one, zero zero, zero one zero one one, zero one zero one one. Now what she does is she prepares, she has the capacity to prepare a photon in a particular polarization state. Now let's look at what's going to happen in these time slots. Alice, she prepares in the X basis the state 1 which corresponds to cat A. Right? So she prepares a qubit in the state cat A. Right? According to this rule, this algorithm 1 corresponds to cat A in the x basis. In the z basis, cat 1 corresponds to B. B. So I'm not going to put the cats, it's underscore that it's there. This is H, B, D, H. This is D, D, H, D, V, A, H, H, D, V, H, A, and B. So she prepares two bits in her 20 time slots, which we've chosen. Right? These are physical qubits, polarization states of photons. And in each time bit, bin, she is creating a photon in a particular polarization state. And these photons then go, they don't go, they go, they don't go to back, they go one by one. To Bob. So a photon is transmitted in this time slot. The first time in a photon is transmitted in the antidiagonal state to Bob. Then the next time bit a vertical photon goes out, then a vertical photon goes out, and so on. And this process repeats itself. The idea that we would like to pursue is how do we generate a key? Now <coughs> The photons enter Bob's world. Bob doesn't know which basis Alice has chosen. And he doesn't know what state, per se, what state the photon is in. So he needs to make a measurement. Alice makes a preparation and Bob makes a measurement. So these qubits are not a part of the actual message. They are being used as a sacrificial uh, material to create a key. Okay, So they go out on, into Bob's world. Now Bob has to make a choice of measurement basis. So Bob needs to decide whether he's going to measure in the rectilinear z basis or the diagonal basis x. Okay, So now he makes a random choice of the measurement basis. 
Once again, he does this totally randomly because that's the best he can do. He doesn't know what Alice's preparation bases are. So he then generates his own random numbers through a random number generator. He doesn't have a computer. He really has a universal random number generator or true random number generator which picks up random numbers from a physical event, not from an algorithm as is generally done in a computer. That's why these are called pseudo random numbers. So then Bob does uh, a preparation of his measurement bases. So he gets, according to the random numbers that he generates, he gets X Z X X Z X X X Z Z X X Z Z X Z X Z X Z X Z Z X Triple Z Z, X, Z, X, Z, Z. So these are the measurement bases of Bob. All right. So now let's look at what's going to happen in these time names one by one. What are the outcomes? So now Bob is making a measurement. So what's happening now is that a photon in a particular state is coming into Bob's apparatus. Now Bob has possibly a polarization beam here. It's taking in some quantum state psi. And this quantum state can either be subject to a polarization beam splitter that splits in the ket h ket v basis. So one of the channels is ket h, the other channel is ket v, and there are detectors over here. And Bob is now detecting these photons. If this lights up, the bit 0 is generated. If this detector lights up, the bit 1 is generated. So this is what happens when the measurement basis is Z. Alternatively, Bob may have chosen to measure in another basis, which is the diagonal and diagonal basis. In that case, one of the outputs is ket D, the other output is ket A. Right? So this is measurement in the diagonal basis or the X basis. And Bob is randomly choosing between either of these measurement schemes. And it can all be done electronically. In fact, this could be done by putting a wave plate here. Because this is nothing but a basis transformation. The measurement apparatus is undergoing a basis transformation. The same effect would be achieved if the state A undergoes an active transformation and the basis measurement basis remains the same. Right? So this is simple quantum mechanics. Anyway, Bob chooses his measurement basis. Now depending upon his measurement basis and the incoming photon, there is going to be some output. Yes. Sir, base change can physically the wave plate quarter wave plate. Or half wave plate which is oriented at 22.5 degrees which converts horizontal to 45 degrees and so on. Now let's look at the first time bin. Alice had prepared an X. An eigenstate of X was produced 
generated and sent onwards to Bob. So it happens that X is, that Bob is also measuring in the X basis. What is his out, outcome going to be? It's going to be A, ket A, right? So ket A corresponds to 1. So his output bit is going to be 1. Got it? Now if, now here again, Alice's and Bob's bases meet. It just happens one-fourth of the time that the bases are identical. In fact, half of the time that the bases are identical. Half of the time, right? So what would be the output here be? 1. An eigenstate is produced and yet that eigenstate sees another operator and this eigenstate is also an eigenstate of the subsequent operator. So nothing happens. That's the measurement postulate of quantum mechanics. Now in this case, the out, the basis of preparation and the basis of measurement are different. So what is the possible, what is the outcome here? Zero? Superposition. So this is ket V. This is a measurement operator, sigma x. What are the possible outcomes? You need to find the eigenvectors of x. The eigenvectors of x are ket D and ket A. Now the input state, so if I were to draw this diagrammatically over here, the input state say is ket V and you have an operator here which is x or sigma x. There are two possible outcomes. The outcomes correspond to the eigenvalues of sigma x which are plus 1 and minus 1 but the output states are the eigenstates of this operator which are ket h, uh, sorry ket a and ket d. So either of these channels is going to light up and you can find out the probability by finding the overlap of say ket v with a modulus square, this is half or ket v with, mod, with d modulus square which is also one half. In this case our output bit is going to be zero because we have associated the label 0 with ket d and label 1 with ket a, right? This rule. These are not eigenvalues, by the way. These are labels that we associate since we are dealing with Boolean logic, zeros and ones. So this output could be 0 or 1. This is the uncertainty principle, really. Indeterminacy. You cannot determine what the input state is because your preparation basis and your measurement basis are different. So whenever the measurement bases are different, you gain no information about the bit that is being sent. Alright? So once this entire sequence has taken place, this entire operation has taken place. So let's find out what's going to happen. Let's first of all identify where the bases match. Here they match output 0. Here they match output 0. Output 1. 1. Zero, zero, zero. That's it. In half of the cases, the bases match. In the other half, they don't. When they don't, the outputs could be zero or one.
At this point, neither Alice knows about Bob's measurement basis and Bob doesn't know about Alice's preparation basis. So they have no clue what's going on. So what they now do is Alice tells Bob her preparation basis in the same sequence and announces it on a public channel. She says, she announces Z, X, Z, 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 X, Z, X, X, Z, X, Z, X. She announces all these 20 bases that she's prepared. And Bob listens. And so can everyone else listen. And when Bob listens, so he identifies the locations or the indices where the bases match. And he keeps those bits preserved and discards all the other outcomes, all the other time in results. Okay, so at this point, uh, they don't care about these results. They just dump them. Remember, they have only announced, Alice has only announced her basis, not the bits. Bob has not announced anything. But he does tell Alice which bits to keep and which bits to discard. And this is also sent over a public channel. So in effect, both Alice and Bob have shared their, their locations where the bases match. But they haven't even told what the bases are. They haven't told whether the basis where the match has taken place is an X or a Z. They just told that at these locations, they have identical bases. But Alice, of course, has shared a list of X's and Z's. So X's and Z's are really known to everyone. So, but the bits are not known. Now, if you look at what remains of this uh, table, which the rows that have not been slashed out, the bits match. They're totally equal to one another. This forms the key. All right, so the key now, therefore, is 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. This is the raw key. If you started off with, on average, capital N instances of communication, the raw key is almost half the length because the bases are going to match in half of the cases. All right. So this is how a secure key has been generated between Alice and Bob without transmitting what the key really is. Now all of this is secure but only up to the point where Eve doesn't exist. What happens if Eve comes into the picture? Right, so we need to find out the probability of that happening. So any questions up, up to this point? This is how a, a key has been generated quantum mechanically using the properties of quantum states and these bases, X and Z bases, have to be mutually unbiased bases. And they're non-orthogonal. Each of these Z has some overlap with X and vice versa. Uh, right? Yes, please. Uh, sir, why didn't Alice and Bob use the same basis for measurement and preparation of the photons? Uh, because if for that, they would need 
So this announcement of basis has taken place after the communication has taken place. Right? If they if they would like to follow the scheme that you propose, that they use the same basis for preparation and measurement, they have to announce the basis before they've sent out the photons. And if they're able to do that, then Eve can jump in and she can impersonate Alice to Bob and she can impersonate Bob to Alice. And then she can, if she knew what the basis are, she could send her photons. So instead of sending a photon in the zero, which is the message or the key, in the X basis, she can send a photon one in the X basis. So you don't want to tell to the world what the bases are before the communication has taken place. And sir, now that Alice is generating these randomly photons, so there is some means of, uh, physical means of transferring those photons to some channel, long cables to Bob. So isn't that channel going to be secure? So when Bob is going to measure those incoming photons, he can get the key directly. Right. So this transmission is transmission of quantum information over a classical channel. Classical channel mean it has to go through free space, like a satellite communicating with another satellite or a ground base station communicating with a satellite or one telescope on SSE communicating with a telescope on the library building. It has to go through some physical channel or to an optical fiber. So when you have a physical channel, there's a, there are two possibilities. One is the possibility is that there is an active intelligent eavesdropper called Eve who can employ different strategies to intercept this data, read this data and yet remain invisible and elude detection. Elude detection means she would like to make herself invisible to the rest of the world and she just reads off what the data is or she can introduce errors into the bits, into the data. So one is that scenario, that's what we're going to look at in a minute. The second scenario is that there could be noise inside the medium. Every transmission is fraught with noise, imperfections. There are channels that are noisy. You could have bit flip errors. A zero turns into one when a transmission is taking place, right? Or uh, a superposition decoheres. So all kinds of errors can take place. Different kinds of channels, amplitude damping, phase damping, etc. So all of this has to be prevented against. And there are schemes to do that. Now what we're going to look at is what happens if the information gets corrupted or there's an eavesdropper called Eve in this scenario. So this is the ideal case. Now what happens if Eve comes into the picture? So if Eve comes into the picture, what? so now we have Alice and we have Eve and we have Bob. So suppose Alice is very intelligent and she knows a little bit of quantum mechanics. So now let's look at another scenario. Let's use some of this data x, z, 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 z. Z, 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 X, Z, X, X. Let's just suffice for this for the time. All right. And Bob's uses X, Z, X, 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 Z, Z, X, Z, X. So this is Bob's scheme. Now Eve is in between. So Alice has generated her photons. A. Can you speak up? Is A V? Is it both of A V. V. Okay. V. 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 D again B B B news of the X Chalo koi bhi hai, for example A right 
Now what happens is Eve has Eve knows that Alice is preparing her photons in X or in Z. But she doesn't know what's happening within each time window. So the best she could do, she could also make random guesses, as Bob had previously done. So Eve is now going to make random guesses of the measurement basis. So what she needs to do is she needs to look at a photon, but in the process of looking at the photon, she is going to make a measurement. She's going to project on her basis. And when she projects on her basis, she gets an outcome, and then she generates her own photon and sends to Bob. Okay, so once Eve chooses some measurement basis, so suppose she chooses Z, Z, X, Z, X, 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 Z, Z, X, right? Suppose this is her measurement basis. Now what she does is, we're still not talking about Bob, Eve has intercepted the photons and she's intercepted all of the photons. There's no loss. There can be loss as well in real scenarios, but there's no loss for the time being. She has intercepted each and every photon that Alice has sent into the channel. Now when she receives Eve, a feminine character by, by name, when she receives her photons, she projects them on a particular basis. If her basis matches that of Alice well and good, she gets an outcome. Now when she gets an outcome, she has to prepare her own photon and send onward, relay onward to Bob. Now what photon she prepares, she decides the best she can do. Let's follow the same rule as Alice and Bob have chosen for themselves. She can choose any rule, but she sticks to the rule that Alice and Bob have decided upon themselves. So when she uh, gets measures in a different basis from X. So she has the complete choice of sending out. So when she does measures an anti-diagonal photon in the Z basis, her outcomes could be 0 or 1 with equal probability. Correct? So she can generate either H or B with equal probability. Alright? So she can generate H or B with equal probability. Let's denote this by in this fashion. Here again, she can generate D or A with equal probability. She generates an eigenstate of her measurement basis. Here, the two bases meet. So she measures B, precisely determines V with 100% probability. Here, she just produces D or A, D or A. Here she does produce definitely D. Here she does produce H. She produces H or B. Once again here she produces A. So she prepares photons. In this case she either prepares H or, or B and she sends onwards to Bob. Yes, please. Right. So generally, it's not that straightforward because when she makes a measurement, she is annihilating the state because the photon is going on a detector. When the photon goes on a detector, it goes bust. The photon is lost. Right? All the energy has gone into the detector. So it's a demolitive measurement. It demolishes the photon. So really she has to take out a new photon from her laser source and create that polarization through a polarization rotation perhaps and send it on this. So it's a demolitive measurement. It's a projective measurement that she does. So when she then sends out a photon to Bob. Now let's look at the simple case. Uh, the simple case is when, oh, unfortunately, suppose I put a Z here. So there, there could be a scenario when all three bases meet. 
so in this time when in this time when all three bases match they coincide and when this ha happens bob correctly measures the bit say b equals 1 is it this equals 1 bob correctly measures the bit that was sent by alice so there's no error even though eve has acquired information about the the bit so it's still dangerous but there's no error at least remember at the end alice and bob have to declare their bases and if their bases meet and eve knows her bases and she knows that it matches alice and bob's bases she would know that the photon she has to pay corresponding to a certain bit is equal is exactly the same bit as alice intended to send and which bob received so it gets information about the bit and that only happens when all three bases match now it's possible that uh, oh this is also true for this case So output is h corresponds to zero. So these two are instances when all three bases match, and no error is obtained in the received bit. It's the same as the bit that was sent off in the first place. But Eve has gained information about this bit. Now it's also possible. Let's look at this scenario over here. Alice and Bob have the same measurement and preparation with D. So how has Eve gained information? Because she doesn't know here. Like how Eve and Bob aren't exchanging information, so Eve has gained. But they have exchanged their bases. But so after the communication has taken place, Alice and Bob have broadcast to the whole world what bases they've chosen for measurement, and Alice. and bob both have used the z bases so eve knows that in that time instance she also measured in the z bases so her outcome has to be same as this bit so she has gained complete information how many times would this happen when all three three of them match half Right. So let's let's work this out in in a minute. Now let's look at this scenario over here. In this scenario, Alice and Bob they use the same bases, but it's different from the bases in which Eve has made a measurement. So in this case, there are two scenarios. when eve prepares her state in h or b and bob measures in x it's possible that with either a, with h and so with b he gets the correct output so there are two possible outcomes here zeros or ones for each of h and b zeros and one zero or one So if it is zero, then her output bit is going to match this bit that was sent by Alice. And if it's one, it's going to be different. It's going to be incorrect. So in half of cases of this kind, half of these cases of this kind, in which Alice and Bob match but different from Eve, even in half of the, those cases, the correct bit can be seen. It's only in half of these cases will an incorrect bit be. produced so so there are two kinds of scenarios one is when all three match the second is when alice and bob match and it doesn't match with right so if you look at all of these probabilities can you
can you determine, can you take a few minutes to determine what is the probability that these bits, uh, so what you want to do right now is first of all you just want to remove all the instances in which Alice and Bob measure in different bases, prepare and measure in different bases because that's what you normally do. In this scenario, if Alice and Bob's bases are different, you just discard those instances. That's what you would like to do here as well. Okay? So, so let's remove certain cases from discussion. Let's remove this. This goes away. This goes away. Because this is going to be discarded anyway. This goes away. So why are they being discarded? Because you see here they were discarded. When Alice prepared in some basis and Bob measured in a different basis, then you don't want to keep those results because even if there were no Eve, the bits wouldn't match. Now Eve is there, so it's not that the bits are going to start matching automatically. So you just want to remove those uh, time bins from consideration. You want to discard those because then the bits didn't even match when Eve wasn't there. right? So now you want to discard those instances and you want to keep only the ones for which Alice and Bob have measured in the same basis. So this one, this one, this one. Now what is the probability that Bob receives the same bit as was intended to be sent by Alice? Probability of no error. And now we're just looking at the subspace of scenarios when Alice's basis is the same as Bob's basis. Okay? So now we're in that special subspace, that special case. What is the probability that no error is received? So the bit, the basis match. What's the probability that Eve measures in the same basis? Half. Half of the time it's going to measure in the same basis. So it's one half. Plus sometimes it also happens, for example here, that if, even though she measures in a different basis, she produces some photon which is not in an eigenstate of the measurement or the preparation basis. But when it is measured in Bob's world, it gives the correct outcome because there is a 50% probability that the outcome is 0 and 50% probability that the outcome is 1. So in half of these bad cases, even in half of these bad cases, the correct outcome is received. Let me just finish. Two or five guessing. Yeto, I've just taken a sample here of this long list and want to see what's the probability. So this is truly working going to work in the limit of large numbers. This probability one half comes from the fact. So we're only considering the cases when Alice and Bob's bases are identical. When that is the case. We have Eve in between. Eve can choose between either of the bases. When she chooses the correct basis, which means the basis in which Alice and Bob's basis, the same as Alice and Bob's basis, that happens half of the time, doesn't it? That corresponds to this, this instance, and it corresponds to this instance. This would happen with probability 50%, because Eve can choose either of the bases. There are only two bases possible. She can choose either of the two bases and that would happen with a 50% probability. And when that happens, all three bits are the same. Alice's bit, Eve's bit, Bob's bit. So that happens with 50% probability. Right. So this is a sure deal. Shabash, good. But then there are, is another way in which the bit received by Bob matches the bit that is 
was sent by Alice. Even when Eve's basis is distinct or unmatched from Alice's and Bob's. Isn't it? half kiss on the Sir, we are saying that match Tino match. now we are in a subspace. We, we have discarded the instances when Alice and Bob's bases don't match in the first place. So we are now living in a, in, in a subspace. It's like a conditional probability. In this space, we are only interested in dealing with the scenarios in which Alice's basis and Bob's basis are the same. In that case, it happens half of, in half of the cases that Eve's basis also matches the, true, the correct basis. That's why we have half here. If you consider the big, then it of course is 1 by 4. So half plus. Now there are some possibilities even when E chooses the incorrect basis. Now I'm using this correct, incorrect basis. I hope you understand what it means. E is choosing the incorrect basis, but still she generates her photon. And when Bob, who has chosen the correct basis, can have two possible outcomes. One of those is correct and the other is incorrect. Because let's look at this example. Alice generates a diagonal state because she has prepared in the x basis, she generates a diagonal, so she has the bit value 1. She sends out that photon, it's intercepted by Eve. Eve is measuring it in the z basis, so this is her incorrect basis. It does not match Alice's basis, so she can have an out, as an output an eigenstate of z, which is h or v. She can produce either of these photons with equal probability because the projection of d on either of these is half. So, she produces either an H photon or a V photon. Suppose she sends out an H photon. Now, Bob is in the correct basis because it matches Alice's basis. But he's seeing an H photon coming in and she's measure, he's measuring in the X basis. So, there are two possible outcomes, zeros and ones. Quantify what you mean? So, he's producing 0 or 1 with half probability, right? But there are two possibilities here, H or V. So, with H you have a half probability, with V you have a half probability. So, it's half into half, 1 by 4. Got it? So, this is like if you make a probability tree, Alice has produced Z, this is Alice. Eve has produced, oh sorry, Alice has produced D, Eve has produced H or V, this then goes back into Bob, Bob measures in the X, so he can either get D or A with equal probability and V can also give D or A, right, with equal probability. So if you so this is one half, one half, one half, one half, one half, one half. So this probability is one half into one half, which is uh, uh, right. So this is one half. So this can go either through this route or through this route. So it's one half into one half plus one half into one half. This is one half, right? One half. Now this one half is one half happens one half of the times because this is incorrect in one half of the time. So this is one half into one half this one by four. This is three by four. So the correct bit the correct bit is received by Bob 75% of the time and there is a chance of error, erroneous bit is being received by Bob 25% of the time. Correct? Now when, uh, so when these bits are shared, when these bits are shared, 
this smaller key which is the raw key is shared this happens when the uh, Alice and Bob's basis match suppose this is the raw key even in the presence of Eve in this case if this is a large key say 100 bits 200 bits 300 bits 75% of the times there will be no 70 in 3 4 per, per bit 75% there is the chance that the bit will be the correct bit each bit so the probability of correctness is 75% per bit and the probability that if this is size is small m of this raw key there is a probability that the probability that there is no error detected whatsoever that all the bits are correct a is going to be three by four is part m this is the probability that no that e doesn't exist that no error is there Now, if uh, this is going to be a very small probability, so if that small probability event is achieved, it means that Eve has really made no impact on the communication. If this m is 100, this is going to be a really small number, 10 to the minus 12, minus 13. So this is the probability that no error exists whatsoever, no error whatsoever exists, right? This is a really small probability. And if, uh, but this is a very strict condition, errors will exist because number one, Eve may exist, she is an adversary, she is the bad guy out there, she would like to intercept data and resend data, okay, so she is playing the bad role here, or there could be noise inside the channel. The noise can also be modeled like Eve, like adversary. The noise could introduce bit flip errors. For, for example, it might change 1 to 0 with a certain probability, 0 to 1 with a certain probability. It's called amplitude damping. So all of this can happen. And if the errors, so the, the number of erroneous bits in the key divided by the total number of bits in the key is called the quantum bit error rate. Quantum bit error rate. So you would like to keep this error below a certain threshold. You would like to keep this error below a certain threshold. If the error rate goes beyond a certain threshold, you just discard that key and start over. If the error is below that bit error rate, you would like to make it almost zero. And how you would do that? You have other techniques in which you split up this key into smaller sections and then look at the parity of each section and then do a quantum error correction uh, probably I'm going to talk about quantum error correction in the last class so and then you would like to distill from this large bit a smaller uh, large key a smaller key you would distill from it which is error free right so this technique is called privacy amplification No, M is the number of bits in the raw key. Once you have discarded the results in which the Alice and Bob bases are different, and you keep only those bits in which Alice and Bob bases are the same, you construct a key which is called the raw key. M is the length of that key. Right. So, so in order to construct the, the key, because Alice and Bob don't know what Eve is doing, what measurement, she does not announce her basis. She doesn't want to do that. She wants to remain as uh, covert, as hidden as possible. She doesn't want to announce her basis. 
So Alice and Bob know no Eve spaces. So it only depends upon Alice and Bob spaces. So you keep only those bits inside the key in which Alice and Bob spaces match. You don't care about what Eve spaces is. So this this probability is within the condition when Alice and Bob spaces are the same. In that case, Eve hits on the correct basis 50% of the times and she hits on the incorrect basis 50% of the times but in that 50% of the times when she hits on the correct basis half of that will it produce the correct bit on Bob. So this is half of half is 1 by 4. So you add these two probabilities to get 3 by 4. So in 3 over 4 of these n bits will be without error. Right? Without a single error. And if you, have, you want to find a probability there is no error on any of these bits in an m bit key, that probability is going to be 3 or 4 is per m. Right? So if you have, I, I just want to finish this off as well today. Suppose <coughs> another mechanism, so now this is quantum information going over a classical channel. Now suppose you have an entanglement based protocol. Suppose there is a source that is generating entangled photons. So there is some source that is generating ket phi plus which is the Bell state. And one of these photons goes to Alice, the other photon goes to Bob. This is Bob's world, this is Alice's world. Suppose Alice can now make a measurement in X or Z basis. And there are many such entangled pairs that are being generated. So in each time bit, an entangled pair has been generated. One photon to Alice, one photon to Bob. And in each instance, each one of these is a time bit. So you create entangled pairs of photons on demand. Switch on kare, tangle bit, agla switch on. Okay? Everything is timed and synchronized. Now Alice receives one photon and Bob receives one photon and Alice chooses to measure in any basis he likes, choosing between X and Z. There is one photon. She has one photon. Say X, Z, X, 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 Z. And Bob chooses Z, Z, X, Z, Z. Z. Right. Now what's going to happen? Now this is an entangled pair, and each one of them receives one photon of the entangled pair. Ket zero and ket one are ideal states of sigma z. What happens when? Ket x, ket uh, zero is measured in the x space. So everything is easy if everything is measured in the z basis, right? So if this state goes out and is measured in the z basis, everything is easy, isn't it? There are two possible outcomes. If if Alice measures a zero, Bob will also measure a zero. Correct? If if Alice measures a one, Bob also measures a 1. This is how this state has been constructed. You project it either into ket 0, 0 or ket 1, 1. Correct? But what if, what happens in this case? This case. When both Alice and Bob, they have the same basis, but it's the x basis. What's going to happen? 
Here, in this case, when both of them are made in the Z basis, the outcomes are perfectly correlated, hai na? Perfectly correlated. Wo bhi zero hai, ye bhi zero hai. Ye agar one karega, ye bhi one karega. Ye definition hai na entangled pair ki. The outputs are perfectly correlated. Now, what happens if they change the perspectives? Each Alice and Bob decide to measure the X basis. What will be their outcome? Will they be correlated, uncorrelated, random? What the output is going to be? Hmm? Still correlated. Perfectly correlated. That's what because uh, if I represent this as HH plus VB, right? This is the same, absolutely the same as 1 over under root 2 DD plus AA. Isn't it? Because if I were to take, where have I made this distinction right? If I were to use these definitions, H will be D plus A under root 2 and B will be D minus A under root 2. And if I substitute these, repla replace this cat H or cat 0 with the combination, I'll get this. This means that the entangle of the bell set is rotationally invariant. It's isotropic. Okay, it's, uh, it's now, so that's why even if you measure in the xx basis, the outputs, if you get a 0 here, the output will be 0 here. If you had a 1 here, the output will be a 1 here. There will be perfect correlation. And if the bases are different, x and z, the outputs are perfectly uncorrelated tandem. And you can also verify this using density matrix formalism. I would like you to do a toy on this. Look at this from a density matrix formula. And in each case, if I were to measure the, I could, I could measure sigma z on both qubits. Doing zz really means measuring this operator. Which means I'm multiplying this with the density operator and finding the trace. This is going to give me the expected value of sigma z, sigma z. And this expected value for entangled state is going to be equal to plus 1. This is also going to be equal to plus 1. So when I measure x on both or z on both, the outputs are perfectly correlated. The expectation values are plus 1, which means the, the outcomes are plus 1 or minus 1 if you talk in terms of eigenvalues. If I get a plus 1 here, I get a plus 1 here. Minus 1 here, minus 1 here. Minus 1 multiplied by minus 1 gives me plus 1. So in each of these cases, I get a plus 1. However, if I use different bases, sigma x and sigma z, and find the expectation value of this, which I can find in this fashion, the output is going to be uncorrelated. Sometimes they get positive numbers, sometimes they get negative numbers. There will be no correlation. Therefore, if I keep only the cases where Alice and Bob have used the same basis, the outcomes will become a key. Those cases will make an outcome, a, a key, a secure quantum key. This is how you can use entanglement to generate quantum keys. By the way, if Eve comes in, Eve says, oh, uh, well, I want to be slightly clever and instead of sending an entangled state, I would like to send out a state, cunning state, like this, half, zero, zero, 
plus half okay, one one bra one one. In this case, what's going to happen is both Alice and Bob are going to receive zero zero by fifty percent probability and one one with fifty percent probability. So it looks as if Eve can do this uh, and just fool Alice and Bob that they are receiving in time. But if you look, if you do this calculation with a density operator, so this is really a maximally mixed state. It's not an entangled state. If you were to do this calculation using this nice pristine scheme compared with Alice's cunning scheme, you would feel the difference. One of these terms is going to be equal to zero. There will be no correlation. So this is how you can also use entanglement to generate quantum keys. In this case, entanglement is the resource that is shared between Alice and Bob. So this is quantum communication over a quantum channel. An entangled pair has been shared. That entangled pair forms the quantum, quantum channel. So you can either use classical channels and quantum states, which is the BB84 protocol, or you could use something clever of this kind in which you have entangled photons going on to Alice and Bob and then you look at the correlation between the outcomes and those correlated outcomes form a key and then you can devise if you are nice at mathematical puzzles and games you could devise many games which Eve can play in order to destroy this communication she can act like a true decoy she can come up with these quantum strategies to see and in each case you can make a key and you can distill stronger and stronger smaller keys from bigger sets. Remember on the blackboard I can only show 10, 20 bits, really it's hundreds of bits at a very high rate, at rates of gigabits or megabits per second. All of this is happening at really fast time scales. So communication is possible. And now you can communicate with satellites using 2KD. You can communicate. There are commercial companies, at least 9 or 10 companies that I know of that are making these devices for communication that are being used by e-commerce, by military and so on. Alright? So, Inshallah, see you on Wednesday.